Today on The Grave Talks, part three of our conversation with Daniel Jackson about his book, The New Beginning, My Awakening as a Spirit Medium. Do you do these readings often? Is that the best way for p- people to connect to you? Because you do have a website as well, and they could set up like a yeah. one-on-one, correct? Yeah, they, uh, they, uh, I have a website. It's uh, www.spiritmediumdaniel.com. It's one long word, Spirit Medium Daniel. And I do two types of readings. Well, kind of two, maybe more like three. Um, one of them, they're just coming in to get some questions answered. The other one, they just want to talk about spirit and they want to learn about stuff. And I'll sit and talk to them for two hours. Um, the other one is, the last one is uh, someone, there are some mediums out there who, who have a similar ability that I do. Now, they don't have what I do. They're not a delight. Uh, but they are able to work with archangels. Um, but I I tell them everything that I went through in order to get where I'm at now. So like, um, I tell them like, uh, when archangels touch you, it's not a pleasant experience. Uh, it's, it's not like the TV show, you know, they're, they're not just going to touch you. And you feel one girl said, Oh, I felt a feather on me. I said, that's not an archangel. Cause they don't have wings and they don't have shields and swords. Uh, they don't need wings because they're in a, a place with no space and time. So they can't mm-hmm. fly anywhere. So why would they need them? Oh, they don't all have wings? No, they don't. Some of them have wings, but that's because they look like a bird. Uh, but uh, but I said, when an, an archangel touches me, in the very beginning, I would feel, at nighttime, when I'd see them around me, I'd feel these cold touches on my body everywhere. Feel these little, cold, cold little touches. And uh, they were working on my soul so that I could see them, hear them, feel them, and communicate with them better. When they would do that, the very next day, I would wake up, and it would be coming out of both ends. I'd be throwing up and crapping everywhere. Oh. And that, that would go on for two or three hours. And then I would recover from it. And then I, I would be okay. And then it would happen again two weeks later. And that went on for three years. Oh, wow. So that's that's the kind of things that I went through. Uh, when I had that and when I had that flu thing and God came to me and all that, that was a purging of my system. So when I explained all the stuff that could happen— that happened to me, that may happen to them. They don't want it. They don't want the kind of... Com- but there was a girl recently who uh, who I talked to about this, and I said, look, God's going to come to you, and he's going to test you with little things. And they're just going to be little things, but you have to do them. I said, you can't not do them. So when these things come up, just do it, okay? So if you get a feeling or you get a voice tell you something... You have to do it because in order to move forward with what you have, like I have, you're working for God and he needs you to do what he needs you to do when he asks you to do it. It's not one of those things where, oh, I don't have time for you right now, God. I got something else to do. You can't do that. You have to do it. When when someone calls me up for a reading, I don't care if we're going on vacation and they say, oh, I need a reading. I do the reading. I When someone comes up to me and they're asking me about something or I'm in a situation where someone starts talking about spirit because I go to Tombstone a lot and they talk about it there. Uh, I, I got in that conversation and then I educate them because they need it. Mm-hmm. So it comes up all the time. So this girl said she called me up like a week later. And she said, uh, I think I screwed up, Daniel. I said, why? She said, I, I went to the mall with my husband. We We parked in the parking lot. And just before we were about to park, I got a feeling that I should not pull my car head in, that I should back the car in. And I said, you didn't do it? She said, no, I didn't do it. She goes, we went into the store. When we came out, the battery was dead on the car. So my dad had to come and, and jump the car for us. But we had to wait till all the other cars left until he could park next to my car. And I said, yep, you failed. She said, that was my one of my tests. I said, no, that was your test. You failed it. And I said, there's no actual failure because there's no, there's no right and wrong. There's no other failures or, or mistakes. There's only what works and what doesn't work. And she did what didn't work. If she would have backed her car in, then her dad would have came, would have jumped the car, and that would have been it. But she didn't think anything of it. She just said, ah, I'll be okay. And she wasn't. And she said, so, so is there going to be a, so what's the next test? I said, oh no, you're done. And she said, what do you mean I'm done? I said, you didn't pass. He gave you something simple to do. You felt it. 
like it was no other business, right? She said, oh, I felt it in me. Like I should just back in. But I just, I said, yeah, you just, basically you said to God, no, thanks, God. I got something else to do. That's what you did. I said, why in the hell do you think he would trust you again? He gave you something simple to do and you just blew him off. Why do you think he would just give you another test? Well, I've been I've been talking to him. I've been in the shower and crying and trying to tell him this is what I want to do. I said, you could tell him all you want to do, but unless you're going to fucking do it, he ain't going to do it for you. I said, you're done. She said, but it's only been a couple, a week. I said, right. God wants you to work for him and he wants you to do it now. I said, I know you have children. And I said, if something were to happen with your children and they, they, they needed to go somewhere, but you had to do this, I know that you would pick your children. She said, well, they're my children. I said, right. And that's why you're not going to be doing this. I said, you could still continue to be a regular medium. You have that ability, but you're not going to work for God because you're not willing to commit to that. And that's what I do. I mean, how do you know yeah. that? Because whenever you call me, I'm available. So I do it. And I know everybody. She said, well, did you know that this was going to happen? I said, oh, yeah, I knew you weren't going to do it. They tell me ahead of time. But I still have to be able to tell you, and I still have to be able to give the, you the option. You could have used your free will. But they told me ahead of time you weren't going to do it because you just don't do anything like that. You Everything is about you and your family. I said, you're not, you're not prepared to do this. You're just not. But it's okay. I said, you're not lower than me, but... But they are. They're all below me. She's not ready to do that. I mean, she, but they wanted her to do it. So they wanted her to choose. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Everybody wants an answer from God all the time, but they're not willing to make the commitment of the answer that they get. I think that's an interesting point. I think that so often people, because that was a good example, you get that feeling, but you don't listen to it and you ignore it. You talk yourself out of it Mm -hmm. or the world taught you to talk yourself out of it because Mm -hmm. they don't want you to have any trust and faith within yourself to do it. I always say you get that voice, that little voice is telling you something, you need to go with it. Right. And that voice is your soul telling Mm -hmm. you to do something. It's Mm -hmm. it's your spirit guides connecting with your soul telling you to do something. And then you talk yourself out of it. Like like when I said, when I sit with somebody with their hand, last time I saw some lady and, and she had a deer standing in front of her and the deer was looking to its left and look into its right, and then stand there, and then backed up, and then went the other way, looked to its left, looked to its right, backed up, and went back to, did the same thing like three or four times. And I said, oh, I see what's going on here. She, she, she said, what? I said, one thing, you have no sense of direction in your life right now, and you talk yourself out of things all the time, because I see this deer looking to the left, looking to the right, and, and talks itself out of it, and just backs up and tries another, and does and keeps doing the same thing. I said, so you talk yourself out of things all the time. You can't make a clear decision about thing, anything. And you have no sense of direction in your life right now. And she said, yeah. <clears throat> and I said, you know how to fix that? She said, how? I said, knock it the fuck off. <laughs> when you get a decision and you wake up in the morning and it's telling you to go to the mall, go to the freaking mall. Because you're supposed to, you're supposed to have experiences there, meet people and, and, and do things. It may not be this big grandioso thing that you think it should be, but it's, it has m- meaning to it. It matters. And if you talk yourself out of it, then you're ending up on the incorrect path and you'll just come back more than everybody else does because you can't get it right because you want an answer from God and you're not committing to the answer. Well, too bad. You mentioned a little bit ago about a podcast. What is your podcast? Um, I have a podcast called Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. That's me. I- I Daniel was, Jackson. Okay, because I thought it was <laughs> Beyond the Veil, but before I said that out loud, I thought I better make sure. Um, yeah, that's how I started. I always come, hello, and welcome to Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. Me, Daniel Jackson. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, because I, I just started saying that one day, and I was like, that's stuff. Keep it. And then at the end of my show, I tell everybody, be good and don't do any stupid shit. But uh, I used to say, be good and don't do any stupid shit. But if you do, don't get caught. But uh, I... My podcast recently got picked up. I I was actually approached uh, for being the angel guy uh, by a, a brand new streaming network that's going to come out, and it's going to be available on Roku and Fire TV. Uh, they originally wanted to uh, to build a show around me, but 
They said, if you have a show, I said, yeah, I have a show. So <clears throat> called Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson, me. And uh, so so I brought, I'm bringing that show to it. Uh, and there's a lot of other shows that are on there, but they they came to me because because I'm the I'm the angel guy. I mean, I talked to one of the CEOs um, when we were because they were telling me about the contract and all that stuff, and he said, "Have you ever thought about doing a panel of guests or something like that?" I said, "No, nah, I've tried that. I don't do that anymore." And he said, "So you won't do that for us?" I said, "No, I won't do that for you. I'm not going to do it for anybody." He said, "Why not?" I said, "Because every time I go on one of those panels." I said, all those other mediums, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and I have to re-educate them mm -hmm. all. And he looked at me, and and, and, I, and he, I said, one of them said this one thing to me, and, 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 and I gave him an answer, and he said, oh, that's very arrogant of you. And I said, don't mistake my confidence as arrogance. I just know I'm correct, and you're not. And the, but the guy didn't realize when I said that to him, the, the other guy, when I, when I said that to him, what that actually means is, whatever you tell me from this point on means nothing, because I know I'm right. And you're not. But he, I think he got it because he shut up. Because they don't know what they're talking about. A lot of these mediums. Oh, you can raise your vibrations. Realistically, good luck with that. Good luck. You got all this crap that's going on and out in the world. And if you're paying, to the, paying attention to the elections and you're paying bills and having to drive a car and, and pay car insurance and all this other crap and the drama at work and all you think you're freaking lit raising your vibrations? Good luck. Good luck. It's not happening. And that other practitioner that's out there telling you to do that, oh, you can do it. You're just fine. They are full of shit. I mean, I'm doing a video soon called The Unintuitive about all these other practitioners and mediums out there. Oh, I'm an intuitive business strategist. No. Your intuition is for you. It's not for you to guide somebody else. No. It just doesn't work that way. And there's a lot of them out there who are doing mm -hmm. this. They they do it for a business strategy. They do it, you know, it's a shim sham flim flam. They're just trying to get your money. That's all they're trying to do. Or the people who want to sell you a bunch of sage and all that stuff. No, it doesn't work. I mean, if, if it actually worked, don't you think all the forest fires in the world would make all the negative energies go away? But they haven't. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't work. It's a lie. So I'm, I'm, I, I go out there and tell people the truth. Because they need it, because they can handle it, but they have to hear it first. I, I had some lady who wanted to be on my show, and she was like, oh, I talk about uh, angels and guardian angels. I was like, uh, you're not real. What do you mean I'm not real? I said, there's no such thing as guardian angels. I said, do you have a guardian angel following you around? What would you learn? You wouldn't learn anything. That's what you're here to do. You're here to learn. So that's how I know you're full of shit. Astrology. Here's what astrology is. Bunch of people standing around thousands of years ago looking up at the stars in the sky and going, let's make a, let's play connect the dots. Hey, it makes a fish. And then they want to equate that to your life. What about the other gazillion stars out there beyond those 12, whatever they are? What about all the other ones? What do they have to do right. with your life? Nothing. Nothing. The original calendar was five months long. Then it was nine, then it was 10, then it was 12. So they had five signs. They created four more. They created one more, then they created two more. It has nothing to do with you. You've been here so many times. Uh, let me find out real quick, Carol. Uh, you've been here 28 times. So you're on your 28th lifetime. You've had 27 other sets of moms and dads, brothers and sisters, dogs and cats, and 27 other astrological signs that mean absolutely horseshit. Because don't let that little newspaper article tell you what your horoscope is to find your day. You'll define it by the choices that you make. But yeah, you've been here 28 times. Hmm. I just asked. They told me 28. I said, did you say 28? They touched me across the forehead, and it happened like that. You've been here 28 times. Hey, that's interesting. You're, on, you're kind of on the high end. Okay. I mean, the average, the average is between 26 and 29, but that's not real bad, bad. I did a reading for a lady who'd been here 43 times, and, and she was, I told her, I said, you're screwing it up. And I said, you're going to have to come back again. Oh, I don't want to come back again. I said, well, you haven't fulfilled your purpose. Do I have time to fulfill my purpose? And I, and I said it my nice way. I said, no, I'm sorry, but you have run out of time to fulfill your purpose. Now, if I told you, Carol, that you ran out of time, what do you think that would mean to you? If you told me in this life that I ran out of time to fulfill my purpose, yeah, I would think I'm obviously towards the end. Correct, and she was. She died six months later. My, my mother-in-law wanted me to get an answer for her because she was— this was in the, in the beginning of everything, and— uh, 
uh, and she said, can you ask your people? Because that's what she called them. And uh, when I'm checking out of here, because she had stage four cancer, she wanted to get out. And I told my wife, I said, you know, I don't really like to do that. But she said, just get her an answer. So I did. And I came back and I said, Dolores, you have two weeks. I need you to write everything down that you need to write. Well, she, I have all this stuff. I'll show you where it's at. And I said, well, we'll write everything down. You need us to know. She did. She died two weeks to the day later. Wow. I'm That's, telling them to go to die. Yeah. Yeah, that would be hard. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I don't think I could. But I have to. Yeah. That so that's the part of the commitment that people just can't do. Yeah. They don't want to, they don't want to do that. I had a guy, I had a guy who who had this uh to this extent. Uh he didn't want to give everything up. He didn't want to give up smoking uh pot and drinking beer and, and alcohol so he could instead of getting answers from archangels, essentially getting answers from God. He didn't want to do that because he wanted to continue to drink alcohol and smoke pot. I don't I can't do any of that because I have to be clear to get answers, clear answers. And he didn't want to give it up. For that, everybody wants to talk to God. They want an answer from God, but they don't want the But they don't want to give up it. anything to get it. Yeah, they don't want to give up the commitment. They, they don't want to make the commitment in order to get the end result. Right. Because the end result takes time. I, I tell people, you, you get a reading from me, oh, I'll see you next month. No, you got to go out. Don't come back to me for like six months or a year. You have to go out and live life. I can't give you answers for everything and hold your hand through life. You have to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. And if you make the correct decisions, great. I had a lady come up to me one time and she said, I want to buy a car, Daniel. I want to buy this red car. And I said, oh, let me get the answer. Yep, you can buy the car. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to get, when you get the loan, you take the money and you go buy the red car. And I said, everything's going to work out. And she said, okay. She came back to me a couple months later and she said, you were wrong. You were wrong. You didn't know what you're talking about. I, I, I lost the car. I said, I, well, let me find out the answer. She said, well, let me tell you. I said, no, I don't want you to tell me because you're a lying piece of shit. I said, you're you're an egotistical piece of shit, so I don't want you to tell me. I'm going to find out from them. And I said, oh, okay. I said, what you did is you didn't actually uh, spend the money on the car. You took some of the money and you bought some jewelry with it. I said, as a matter of fact, that necklace you got on right with, right there, you actually bought that with it. So, And you just kept up that. And instead of making all the full payments, you were doing that. And your car got repoed, right? And she said, yeah. I said, so I was right. And she said, yes. I said, okay. And she said, so I have another question for you. And I said, no. Right. And she said, what do you mean no? I said, no, I'm not going to get the answer for you. Because if you're not going to listen to me, listen to getting answers for you, why would you, if you didn't want to listen then, why would you listen now? You're not going to. You haven't changed. You're still going to do the same stupid shit. So no, I'm not getting an answer from God for you. And it almost you, feels like she came back to prove some kind of weird point. Yeah. Like, you're absolutely. wrong. Look at me. I'm the right one. That's yeah, weird. That, like, why even they, do that? They Well, I was doing a live show for a while, and I had a lady come on one time, and she said, I, I want to talk. I want to get some answers about my brother who passed away. Now, the one thing that people don't know is when I'm doing a reading for him, the first question I ask is, is this person telling me the truth? And I got when when she was asking me the questions, I said, I, I asked her, I said, she telling me the truth? And I got, no. I touched my face, no. I said, so she's not telling me the truth? No. And then they said, manipulated question. I said, oh. I said, her brother's not really dead, is he? And they said, no. And I said, okay. And then I said to her, I'm sorry, but I can't answer that question for you. And she said, I knew it. I knew it. You're not real. I knew it. I knew, and everybody in this room should know he's not real. And I said, no. I, I can't answer the question because your your brother's not dead. You're asking me that question, trying to trick me so I can get some answers for you about your brother who's dead, but your brother's not dead, so that's why I can't answer the question. So you're trying to trick me so you can manipulate everything so you can get out of all these people in here to believe that I'm not real. But I am actually real. How do you, you know how I know that? And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, how do you think I would know your brother's not dead? And she said, "Oh, you're 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 faking it." I said, "Really, <laughs> really, no." I said, "Get out of my room." I mean, I had another lady come to me. She wasn't tricking me, but she she came to me and she said, uh, "Can you find out some information about my brother who passed away?" I said, "Oh, uh, yeah, your brother passed away because he was murdered." I said, um, "He was down by the train tracks, and uh, and uh, a, a train came by and cut his head off." Uh, she said, "Yeah," and I said. Yeah, well, that's because your brother was a piece of fucking shit. I said, your brother was a drug addict. He was messing with the wrong people, a drug deal that went bad, and they murdered him. And she said, yeah. 
I didn't know that part, but yeah, he was he was a bad person. He was doing a lot of drugs. I said, yeah, that's why he died. But but I said, don't worry about it. That was meant to happen. Because your your brother was not learning his lesson. He could have changed his life around and not and done didn't. that. Then he would still be here for that. But he changed it in a way where they just said, okay, it's time to go. So yeah, they, they, they pull that shit on me sometimes, but it never gets through to what they're trying to do because I'm always right. So when you write the next book, can we have another conversation? I'll tell you, I don't know when that book's going to come out. Whenever it comes um, out. Yeah. It, you it let all, me um, know. The network does want, um, they want to be part of it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they absolutely know the guys are getting, that's for sure. Uh, but... Uh, uh, but yeah, they want to, they want to be part of it. Uh, but, uh, that I have the title of the book. So the title of the book will be called I am the light. The, this next book is just going to, um, basically explain what it's like to be me every day. Like hearing all the voices mm-hmm. from all the other spirit talking to me. I, I spirit come through one time and tell me my life here is like living in a prison sentence. And then, and then, uh, and then I could hear another girl next to her laughing. She was earthbound, so because that's not a nice place. Not the, I mean, it's not the worst place, but it's not a great place. But uh, right, yeah. They, so I I put all that stuff in the book. Um, I'm I'm writing down all the messages that came through, and then I tell them I say you know why they said that because it gets told to me why they say that, so I write it all down in the book, and then I'm just writing about what it's like to be me, and go throughout my day ever since, um, that time that um. Basically, when the when the other book came to an end from that until now, because that was all that stuff that that was going on then that's in the first book was up until 2018, basically. So um, So lots is a lot has happened since. Yeah, a lot has happened since even when I was I was going to events and stuff and doing I met this one lady who who uh, writes books and she was in a little bit of spiritual stuff. And she's, and I told her what was going on with me. She's like, Oh my God, you should write a book. I said, yeah. I said, when I, when I wrote the book, I, I, I when I'm, I, I'm going to write the book. I said, but I was told to write the book. She said, who told you to write the book? I said, Archangels did. She was like, really? I said, yeah. I said, I was in meditation and they, they showed a guy who looked like me standing at this, like, like, um, like uh like a table and um like an architectural table and uh this guy was standing there writing on some scrolls and i said oh he's writing something because i can talk to them just like i am now like this and i said no oh, he's writing something what's he writing and then they showed me a piece of paper and i had my handwriting one i said what do you want me to write a book because i told that to my one of the ladies at the at the uh at the group i said i told them she's like i think they want you to write a book i was like yeah i think they want me to write a book and she said, what's the name of the book going to be? And I said, The New Beginning. That's what they told me it's going to be called. I was like, I... she said, what are you going to write about? I said, I don't know. I asked them the same thing. They said, they're just going to write it. You're going to write about you and all the experiences you have. And then at the end, when you come to the end, we're going to give you some messages to, to write down. And that's chapter 12, the basics. And, uh, and then that'll be it. And I was like, hmm. but a lot of that stuff that was happening, like when I was there with her, I didn't write the book until years later because life did get into my my mom was doing really bad. My wife's mom was doing really bad. And by the time that they had both passed away, I just said to my wife, I think it's time to write the book. But the good thing about it was I had a lot of experiences from that point through those years until that point uh, that that happened to me. Uh, and then I put that all in the book. So, I mean, that just happened the way it was supposed to happen. But uh but yeah, I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure when this next book will come out. Uh, I didn't even think I was ever going to write another book. But again, they told me to. Write I don't. I was going to say, Daniel. I don't think you have a say. I think. Yeah. I, you know, I think if if you're told to do something, you should do it. Everything they tell yeah. me to do, everything. I do. I w- I wake up in the morning, Carol, and I look at my pill bottles. Now I do it a different way now, but I will go out into the kitchen and I'll get my pill bottles because I'm diabetic and I'll pick one up and look at it and they'll touch me on the face. No, I put it down. The next one I pick it up. No, I put it down. The next one I pick it up. Yes, I pop it open. I take that pill. I do everything. But now I get it to the point where I just, 
I, I wake up and I, I think to myself, do I need to take all my pills? They touch me, no. I, I go into the kitchen. I get my insulin. I take that. And that's it. I do everything they told me to do. Mm-hmm. Everything. And everyone can do that. You can listen to your soul. Mm-hmm. You can listen, trust, and follow through with what your soul is telling you to do. But you got to want to do it. Right. And, and it will help you. It's, it's that you have a guiding light. You have a, an internal compass inside of you that is trying to guide you through your life. But if you're not going to listen and trust and follow through, and you're only going to ask for answers when you want them, then you ain't going to get them. You have to listen, trust, and follow through and do it all day long, every day for the rest of your life, from the time that you hear my voice right now until the time that you're checking out. And that you'll see the, the repetition of the good things happening all the time if you do that. But if you don't, stop asking for answers from God. Stop. Because you're not doing what he wants you yeah. to do. Jesus was here to show us that we could live as free men and women, take care of each other, and share everything in the world. He died for being a free thinker. He did not die for your sins. He was not the only divine spirit. We are all divine souls. We are all created from God from a part of him, which makes our soul divine soul. Everyone's a divine soul. He was on the streets being a free thinker, telling everybody, this is the way we could live. We don't have to live under their rule. God says we don't have to live under their rule. And they saw that. They, the kings and queens, and said, we can't have this guy on mm-hmm. the street. We got to get him off the street. So they, they got him off the street. They put him on a cross. They tortured and murdered him in front of everybody to let everybody know that if you follow Jesus and do what he's doing, we're going to do this to you too. So that's why they want you to wear a cross around your neck, not to, to remind you of what Jesus did for you because he didn't. They want to remind you that they have power and control over you. And if you do what he's doing, we're going to do this to you too. So if you go, in other words, if you go against us, we'll ruin your life. That's what we'll do. That's yeah. why they want you to wear a cross around your neck. Don't do it. Because every time you do it, every time you say amen, you're following what religion does. I mean, come on. I mean, when that, whenever you hear somebody, how do you know religion's got control of the world? When you hear somebody sneeze and somebody goes, oh, God bless you. You know where that came from? It came from people standing around back in the day when Jesus was here, and someone would sneeze, and they'd say, God bless you, because they were saying that because they were because they were trying to— uh, they thought when you were sneezing, you were releasing demons from your body. And they would say, God bless you, so no more demons would go back in your body. But you know what happened? Everybody kept sneezing, because they're full of shit. <laughs> That's what they are. So stop listening to them. They tell you eat bacon one day. They tell you eat, not to eat bacon the next day. They tell you wear this shoe and that shirt, but don't wear this shirt and that shoe. You know what they need to do? They need to sh- shut the hell up, and we need to stop listening. That's what we need to do, because we relinquished the power to them a long time ago. We need to stop listening and take the power back. So the book is The New Beginning. It's My Awakening as a Spirit Medium, and you can find it um, in Amazon. Yes. You, you can, can download it there, or you can buy an actual hard copy of it. Yep. You can buy a hard copy of it. The hard copy of paperback is $8. You can download it for $6.49. Uh, we're actually going to do a uh, audio book because everyone who watches my podcast or or uh, they say they like my voice, uh, they say they would like to hear my voice yeah. actually speaking the book. Uh, they say I have a soothing voice, but very uh, profound voice. But uh yeah, so we're going to do a uh, an audio book of that soon. So um, I'm not sure when we're we're actually building a, a like a little studio box thing around the microphone and stuff like that, so we can do that. Yeah, the it's got to be super it. quiet when you do audio. Books. Yeah, yeah. So we got to make sure the cats aren't meowing and stuff like uh, that. The story of my life: dogs yeah. barking, cats meowing yeah. all the time. Yeah, and then the, the yeah, podcast well, is beyond the veil. And yep. Daniel, you're so generous with your time today, and I really, really enjoyed our conversation. You gave me a lot to think about, too, when I read the book. So thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your story. Thank you. Thanks for having me on here. I appreciate it. And that wraps up our conversation with Daniel Jackson about his book, The New Beginning, My Awakening as a Spirit Medium, available on Amazon. For more information on Daniel, visit his website at spiritmediumdaniel.com. If you'd like access to all of our episodes, including the archive and advance episodes, everything commercial free, then become a gravekeeper. Sign up on Apple Podcasts where you can try it for three days free, or you could also go to patreon.com slash thegravetalks. I'm Carol Hughes, and for all of us here at The Grave Talks, thank you very much for listening.